Hey everyone. I'm just gonna kind of try and uh, shoot a little video here. Some stuff I had going on recently. There's a little brown spot on my face. See that? Turns out that little bugger is a uh, melanoma cancer. So I'm going in today at 4.30 to get it cut out of my face. And it's kind of shocking to uh, to see how much they chop off of there to remove that small dime size melanoma cancer. You'll see after the procedure when I uh, post up the you know video of the uh, the scar and stitches and all that kind of stuff. But the plan at the moment is to remove. They're going to start here and end here. They create a circle around the brown spot with a one centimeter margin and I guess you can't close a circle so that's why they're extending so far above and below so that uh, they can try and make a neat closure. But anyway, I just wanted to uh, get on here talk about it a little bit and kind of discuss some of my experiences with it to this point. Previously, I had been to two other dermatologists who looked at it and they you know just based on what they saw diagnosed it as an age spot and that was two years in a row two different di uh, dermatologists and then this year I went to a different dermatologist uh, for something on my chest and uh, you know I wanted them to take a look at that because it was one of those things where you can scrape a scab off and then a day or two later it has a scab again and just kind of repeats itself that way. Then uh, when I was in the chair with him looking at that, he says, I'm more worried about what's on your face. So he took a uh, biopsy of the, this little brown spot on my face and it came back as melanoma in situ. Um, all this stuff is brand new to me. I don't know anything about it outside of the research that I've done since. And uh, it's been quite a bit of that. So. I, uh, I scheduled with the, uh, the surgeon to remove it. The dermatologist himself doesn't do it. He's got a, a person in his office that is kind of a multi-practice uh, surgeon. He's a Mohs surgeon and a plastic surgeon. So that's who's going to be performing the excision. Um, and so I went in there after going on a little vacation thing and I had my head all in the right place to get this little dime size thing removed from my face and expected that it would just be that, just that right there. Just cut around that little brown thing and call it good. And that took a little bit of, uh, you know, cracking through the anxiety to even get my head in the right place for that. Then he marked up my face and you'll see an image later uh, as this video progresses um, that shows the proposed cut and it was shocking when he marked my face up to show how much skin they wanted to take away for this little tiny brown spot. So then I bailed on that procedure because you know wow that was way more than I had ever anticipated being removed so I needed to get more opinions and do research before I let someone hack half of my face off. So went, went about all that, got a second opinion, kind of came down to the same basic idea. It, with the other doctor, it wound up as a type of situation where you get the dermatologist cuts out the, uh, uh, the cancer and then a plastic surgeon cleans it up and tries to pretty it up. He had a different approach for how to do that, but the end result would be the same where it was going to be a relatively large cut with a uh, one centimeter margin that goes around it. So it winds up like, you know, maybe half dollar size hole, maybe a little bigger than a half dollar. Uh, then they have to clean that up. So I decided to go ahead on with the first surgeon that uh, gave me the 
you know, the original markings on my face after doing a bunch of research. I see that he's, he's coming back with fantastic reviews, lots of photos and things like that on his, uh, on his website and Yelp. So I'm confident in who I have doing it, but it is certainly an unnerving deal uh, to, uh, to go from, um, you know, thinking that you're getting a dime size cut out of your face to getting, getting a hell of a lot more than that cut out. But this procedure is taking place today at 4.30. So, you know, it, I'm a little nervous about it, obviously. I've done all the things I can do to kind of prepare myself for it. I got, uh, you know, I, I've done lots of research on the Facebook pages for Mo's surgeries and all that kind of stuff. And uh, most of the people that speak on there say the, uh, uh, the numbing shots is the worst part of it. So I mentioned that to the doctor and he prescribed me some, some stuff from a compounding pharmacy where they mix a few different things together to create a cream to spread on there that you can uh, numb your face with the cream to kind of take away the, the pain of the numbing shot. I figure, why not? I'm going to do this thing. So uh, numb it up. That way I don't have to have that anxiety uh, from the numbing shot get me all ramped up before the, uh, the actual procedure. So I'm hoping this numbing cream helps and, uh, you know, the, it helps take away the, the initial shock and anxiety of that, uh, you know, the numbing shots that they do. Um, so I got that part going on. Um, this, uh, this doctor, you know, I have a couple other friends that have dealt with cancer along their, along the way in their lives. And, you know, they've sent me all kinds of insight and, you know, assistance in finding doctors to see who's the best and all that kind of thing. And, uh, Coincidentally, the uh, you know one of the links that was sent to me listed all of the Mohs surgeons in Southern California in order from best to not best, and this guy came back as number one. So that certainly helped build my confidence with with that. And on his website, it shows quite a few pictures of uh, you know his patients. Some with significantly large cuts, like what I'm expecting to have on mine, and uh, you know, there's there's a couple that show the initial cut, the stitches. His stitches are impeccable. They uh, they're really nice, tight, beautiful stitch work with all the skin flap kind of laying in there at the same plane. And uh, then there are other follow-up pictures, one two weeks later when the stitches get removed and you can see the scar and another nine months later where the scar is virtually invisible. And I am sure hoping for that result. You know, funny, not funny, when I went in to get this removed initially and we got all the nurses in there kind of running around preparing and uh, the doctor came in to talk with me a little bit and I was joking with the nurse you know, in the beginning, getting prepared to get this little dime-sized thing cut out of my face, which is what I expected in the beginning. And I kind of jokingly told her, I want this to go one of two ways. I want it to either uh, uh, be no scar or G.I. Joe. And then the, uh, the doctor came in and marked my face up, and I was like, whoa, I was just kidding. You know, practically thinking that his marks were in jest, um, but they weren't. So it looks like we're gonna be going the GI Joe route for a little bit and I'm in hopes that the, uh, you know, the incision and the closure and the stitches and everything goes just right where, uh, you know, eventually the scar will go away. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with it and I'll, I'll be creating some follow-up videos and I'll probably bring up some things that, uh, you know, happened along the way to where I got to this point, but I'm just not thinking of them at this moment. So I'll probably bring some of those things up in future videos. But I just wanted to take a few minutes and talk about this uh, before the procedure to kind of document, you know, 
what got me here and uh you know i'm sure there are other people with skin cancers and having all the same fears and anxieties that i'm having uh, right now and throughout the time that it got diagnosed as uh the melanoma you know that's that's kind of a scary thing you know you, i didn't know much about it and start doing a bunch of research and some of the research will scare the hell out of you i know it did me but you know i'm just kind of keeping myself grounded and doing what needs to be done i know that uh this particular uh, little cancer spot here was caught very early so there is a high likelihood of uh, you know, no future melanoma and 100% removal, and that's what I'm going for. There, uh, there was another option that was presented to me to to resolve this cancer, and it was a, a high density light treatment where they put some sort of cream and then hit it with a high density light to kind of burn it off. And, you know, in my research with that, I see it's not often used for melanoma and even for the basal cell and, um, you know, whatever the other skin cancers are called. It had a, you know, significantly lower uh, percentage of success in 100% removal to prevent recurrence. So, you know, after reading all that stuff and going through it and seeing that that method had, I think it was an 84% it was either 84 or 94% um, uh, chance of full removal uh, without recurrence. And then the, uh, the cutting it out has a 99.9% .9 chance of removal without recurrence because it was caught at such an early stage. Um, so I opted for the aggressive approach and I'm gonna hack that thing out of there and hope for the best. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll keep creating these videos as things go on and I'm in hopes that the, uh, the surgeon, uh, will share his photos and video. I know that they're going to be taking video and, uh, photos throughout the procedure. So hopefully I can get him to share some of that gory stuff with me too. And I'll decide, you know, whether or not to, uh, include any of that in future videos. I probably will just for you know full disclosure um, but uh, this is my first video blog my uh, you know this is just one of the ways I'm gonna try to deal with uh, processing this thing is to uh, kind of create somewhat of a memoir to uh, hopefully help somebody else that has to go through the same thing uh, and getting some cancer cut out and that's about it. I'll see you on the next video, which I hope I'll be able to keep my stuff together and shoot it after the procedure this evening. My procedure is at 4.30 today, and we'll see how I feel. Oh, one other little tidbit was uh, the, the surgeon um, was unable to prescribe um, any medication or anything to uh, you know, kind of take the anxiety down. So he said I could go get with my general physician to get something for that. And I, I was reading in the Facebook forums that, uh, um, you know, either Xanax or Ativan are, you know, often used to kind of take away some of the anxiety while you're in the chair. Because all this stuff happens while you're awake. They're, they're not putting you to sleep for it. You're awake. And, uh, you know, you just have to kind of ride it out. There's the numbing stuff, so you shouldn't feel too much. I was told that, you know, you may feel some stretching when they pull the skin to, to close, the, uh, close the incision. You can feel some stretching and things like that, but I should be able to get through that. But, um, yeah, so anyway, I got them to prescribe me Ativan to take the edge off. And like I was saying earlier, there's that cream to kind of take away the, the, the pain and discomfort from the actual numbing shot. I figure I'd go that route to try and keep all the anxiety down uh, before, uh, before getting cut. So anyway, I'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching and uh, keep an eye out for the next video.
Thank you. Have a good day.